Bangerang Rufio, and welcome to the Lost Boys Gaming Podcast, where we discuss Nintendo's latest news, leaks, rumors, and updates. I'm your host, Trey Anderson, and today I am joined by special guest Let's Play Gray as we discuss what we may see from Nintendo in the heavily rumored June 29th Direct. Welcome, everybody, to the Lost Boys Gaming Podcast. Today we are joined by special guest Jeremy from Let's Play Gray. We're excited to have him here. We're going to be talking a little bit more about the Nintendo Direct and kind of some of our expectations and thoughts about what we may see from Nintendo as we get closer to uh, June 29th. Uh, how you doing, Jeremy? I'm doing great, Trent. How you doing? Good. Uh, we're excited to have you here. Um, maybe you just, me. Uh, throw, uh, tell us more a little bit more about uh, what what you do over on YouTube, where where our listeners can find you, and uh, yeah. So right now, um, I'm on YouTube as Let's Play Gray, Gray's with an E. And uh, right now I've been doing a lot of uh, playthroughs of video games, and I just recently started dabbling in talking about video games and video game news. So you can expect to see a lot more of that from me as well. And I'm on uh, Twitter and Instagram under the same name, Let's Play Gray. Cool. Yeah, go make sure you go give uh, Jeremy a follow over there on Let's Play Gray. Uh, he's, he's doing some great stuff over there. Uh, I've enjoyed his playthroughs. Last, I think the last stream that I was really kind of watching was you doing some shiny hunting in Legends Arceus. So, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> uh, if, if you enjoy that kind of stuff, and then like you said, he's also uh, talking more about news and what's going on with Nintendo and other gaming uh, gaming sources. So, be sure to go ahead and check him out. Um, so yeah, so like I said today, we were talking more about uh, the Nintendo Direct, uh, what we can maybe potentially see from Nintendo. Uh, it, it does sound more and more like this is actually going to happen on the 29th, uh, as as we've all kind of heard, Alana Pierce had kind of leaked out unknowingly or knowingly, I don't know about if the direct doesn't happen on the 29th on Twitch, just kind of nonchalantly saying, hey, 29th uh, during a stream, which has then been um, kind of corroborated, I guess, by like Nate the Hate, Jeff Grubb has said some stuff that it sounds like this is when it was gonna come. He's been hearing the end of June, so that kind of lines up with that timeline. Um, so Jeremy, I'm just curious, what, what is your like biggest hope for the Nintendo Direct? Like of all the things that we've kind of heard, all the stuff that's been announced or hasn't been announced, what are you most excited for to, to see during the Direct? I think it's pretty unrealistic. I think it just, I want to see, um, DLC for Mario Party Superstars. That's like the top of my list. But then right under that, I really want to see what they're going to put out for Zelda this year because they, Nintendo said they want to put out a Zelda game every year, and since they pushed yeah. Breath of the Wild in 2023, we're not, there's no Zelda game yet, so I'm just wondering what they're going to do, what they're going to port, because I don't think they're going to do a new title before Breath right. of the Wild. That's probably going to be a port or just like a, a remaster like they did with Link's Awakening. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, that'd be sweet. I mean, Mario Party, I've been bounding, pounding that Mario Party DLC <laughs> drum for a while. That game, it's so fun, but it definitely needs some DLC. So Yeah, I need more characters, more maps. Yeah, stuff. totally. So with with Zelda, here's my question then, because I've heard a lot of different things, and I've, I mean, I'm sure you have too. So yeah. with this, because yeah, I think that they put out something Zelda. There's no doubt it's too big of an IP for them. And like you said, they want to put out something every year. Yeah. So we've heard a ton about this dual pack of games potentially with Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. There's also some people talking about Grezzo potentially remaking. Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons and kind of throwing that out. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I feel like I've heard more about uh, Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Do you think that that's the likelier or do you think that there is some credence, I guess, to this Oracle of Ages Seasons remake that's similar to like that uh, Link's Awakening type style of a remake? I think that the likely thing would be to put the Wind Waker Twilight Princess port on the switch and like a lot of people have said i think they have it done they're just not putting it out because yeah they're just being nintendo <laughs> which is fine right. <laughs> but um i think for some reason i'm starting to lean towards the oracle of ages oracle of seasons uh remaster remake whatever you want to call it because it's nintendo and they're just gonna throw us a curveball but personally yeah. i'd rather see the wind waker port i've never played twilight princess um so i want to play that and i just absolutely love wind waker so i'd really like to play it again yeah, I mean, I would love to see the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess come, I think, over Oracle of Ages and Seasons. Yeah. To your point, though, Nintendo does, I mean, <laughs> they don't they don't care what we think sometimes. <laughs> it's like they're going to do whatever they want. Um, yeah. And kind of speaking uh, to sitting on games for a while. So, like, I mean, like you said, it's been rumored that we've been sitting on 
Twilight Princess and Wind Waker for who knows how long. Um, I mean, with just those being ports, it's so easy, I guess, for them to kind of do that pretty quick and then just kind of have it in their back pocket for whenever they might need it. Um, yeah. But have you seen anything about the Fire Emblem leak that apparently has also been done for like over a year and just <laughs> been they've just been sitting on that too? Yeah, I, I don't really understand why they would do that. Plus, uh, like people are saying, they just they're coming out with three hopes. Or is that out? No, it's not. Yeah, three Sorry. hopes. Yeah, it comes out in a couple months or next month or something. Yeah, next month. The demo came out. That's what I got confused about. But uh, I don't know why they would have a game just waiting unless the three hopes ties everything together for the next game. But right, it, I'd be I'd be pretty impressed if they had another full blown game ready because those are pretty big games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. How, yeah, I think they're big games. The, the thing that I don't. I mean, I'm not a huge Fire Emblem fan, so I can't maybe speak to this franchise as, as well as a lot of other people but personally i think that a lot of people are thinking that this is going to be like their big reveal like this is the big game that they're going to announce personally i think that that's kind of disappointing i don't know how you feel like is fire emblem a big enough ip to be like the bigger reveal in your opinion uh no i mean i think it definitely it has its fans but i don't that would just be such a curveball it wouldn't really make any sense they have other things that I think would have more of an impact if they really wanted to like blow people's minds they'd give us a full-blown metroid prime 4 trailer or something like that like that i think would blow people's minds a lot that more would be crazy fire Emblem game yeah i and would I, love to see a fire or a metroid prime 4 trailer that would be crazy even if it's a cgi one like i'll take that i don't, I don't think we're gonna get it at this direct but it, that would be <laughs> that would definitely be mind-blowing that would be crazy so what do you think like when do you think we'll see it Prime Four, like it's been, what they announced it in like 2017, is that or 2019? What's my <laughs> yeah. math? I don't even remember now. It's, it's just it's been, been so a long, long time, and we got that like official the title at like a, what is it, like six months ago or something. I don't even remember anymore. But uh, I I don't think we're gonna see anything about that at this direct. I think if we got anything for Metro Prime Four, it'd probably be in like the fall, at a different event or direct. And I feel like it could be a 2023 game, maybe like holiday season 2023. Yeah. Or they'll all the way back to 2024, which I don't If they've been working on this game for four or five, even six years, like, I don't know what's taking so long, honestly. Because yeah. the Switch is now for five years, right? So five years, yeah. Maybe they, they announced Did they announce it with you. Did they announce it with Breath of the Wild? Or was it the next E3? Was it the year after the launch of the Switch? Because remember, yeah, I'm remember. pretty sure it was an E3 Direct and they just they just threw the the logo and I was like this game's in development and it's like <laughs> yeah okay and then you haven't heard anything about it since but yeah I just I wonder what they're doing I don't know if like they started developing it on maybe the Wii U and then it just changed to the Switch so they had to re I don't know but um, I think we'll get something from that by the end of the year honestly I could see it being a 2023 game yeah uh, I think 2023 is definitely realistic I hope we see something by the end of the year so I guess because what we got this direct in June so they've got one more because what traditionally they do three directs like a February, a June, and September ish, something like that, right? Yeah. So we could probably see something towards the end of the year, but that at a direct at least. That's what so, I'm betting. I'm betting we'll see it in, in the fall direct along with uh, Breath of the Wild 2 stuff. Yeah, because like because like right now too, that's the other question with with this direct is like everything that they've announced so far is pretty much for this year. Like outside of Breath of the Wild 2, which is early spring 2023. I don't mm -hmm. think that we have a ton for for next year. Everything else we know for the most part, like, so Three Hopes comes out next month. Splatoon yeah. comes out in September. Xenoblade Chronicles 3 comes out next month. You got mm -hmm. Pokemon in November. That's, yep. that's pretty much your lineup for the rest of the year. And then they've got uh, advanced boards that they could drop probably whenever, just depending on when they decide to, to do yeah. that. That's that's Which, that's a done game. They're just I think they're just waiting for the world to cool off a little bit. Yeah. So I mean I think I think that that could still come this year. I don't know yeah. how long Nintendo sits on it, I guess, and waits for, like you said, for stuff to kind of cool down and to to be in a little bit better of a spot to release a game that's about invasion. Um, yeah. They could maybe but, just, I feel like they could just drop it randomly with like some holiday stuff, just lumping yeah. with everything, so it's not like brought to too much attention. Yeah, definitely. I think like I think that could definitely be something like just almost like just like a shadow drop, like yeah. hey, it's here. Basically, so yeah. I mean, like outside of those though, we don't know. So we, they still have announced what Bayonetta three. So we don't know when that doesn't have a date yet. No. <laughs> um, I'm hoping they but, don't push it back. 
Yeah. So, I mean, like, there's all this, there's a ton of stuff we know about, but most of it's either this year or it still doesn't have a date. So, yeah. like, to your point, Metroid Prime, if they announce anything, I don't know, if, do you think they announce a bunch of stuff for next year at this direct, or do you think they hold off till September? I think they could announce, like, one thing for next year to just kind of put alongside Breath of the Wild 2. But yeah. I think they're going to probably mostly focus on the games that are going to close out the year. Yeah, I think that makes the most sense because there's like as far as like holiday releases too, we've got Pokemon and that's about it. I that's all we know about. There's gotta be at least one other right? There's gotta be at least one other IP that comes out for like Christmas and Hanukkah, all that the holiday time period, right? It could be the Zelda. Whatever the Zelda game is, they, that could be the other big one. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd that be would good. be that would be a fun <laughs> holiday game. I'm not going I would pick Especially if it's a combo pack, that's like a super good value grab for for like yeah. the holidays. Like, oh, you're and getting I, two games for one. Yeah, and I've heard people argue that Nintendo's not going to do that because they're um, they could just sell them separately, but like they did with uh, Skyward Sword. But the, right. the argument is that they had to rework Skyward Sword a lot. And right. The Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are already in HD ported, so it's just copying it to a different platform. Like, it's not a lot of work. Like Skyward yeah. Sword was. So, like, I don't think they're going to get too greedy with that. I think they would do a double pack. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I agree. Because, like, to your point, Skyward Sword took, I, like, I, there was a ton of stuff where they were even saying that this game would probably never come because they weren't sure how they would map the controls with being able to do button only. So, yeah, yeah I think that that game probably, I mean, it was worth, like, personally, Skyward Sword is my favorite Zelda game, so I would have paid 60 bucks regardless. Mm. But um, I think to your point that... Um, Twilight Princess Wind Waker is pretty much just a copy paste at this point. Like they yeah. don't, they might need to remap a couple things for Twilight Princess, I think, um, mm -hmm. because that had like the Wii, you could do like the Wii, the Wii uh, thing, but it wasn't so like, it wasn't like if I, it's been a long time since I played it and it's, I'm pretty sure it wasn't like the Skyward Sword where it was like your emotion. It was like, you just would swing the, the Wii remote and it would make Link swing a sword. Oh, okay, but, okay. Yeah, that was that took some getting used to in Skyward Sword because uh, on the Switch was my my first playthrough. Yeah. So I didn't use the Joy Cons; I just used the controller. But even just like, okay. you, like slash the sword, it was it was different. It was cool. I liked it a lot. But yeah, it was least, fun. Least, you know? Yeah, I played buttons. I played buttons uh, controls my first playthrough. Uh, yeah. It was it was weird holding down like the the L button to be able to <laughs> to like use the camera. But it was, I, it was definitely was like it was curve. weird, but it was fun. That was a big learning curve for me. I remember when I first played the game, I, it's just like I felt lost. Like I didn't even know how to play video games because I'm just so used to controlling the camera with the right analog stick. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what what comes for 2023. But um, so I guess, and then Metroid Prime, we have that. There's that game that's supposed to be supposedly coming out too with speaking of remakes a little bit yeah um, the hd remaster of metroid prime one or so remake? yeah sure it's, it's i think supposedly it's supposed to be like a remake that's what yeah. I, I that's what i've heard it's like a from the ground up like they're not just going to retouch metroid prime one it's like it's a full-on remake which That'd would be, be sweet intense. yeah that would be awesome like i but i wonder if them doing that is pushing metroid prime 4 even further back um yeah i think i honestly think if they put out metroid prime one or a metroid prime trilogy it's giving it's one it's giving them more time to put four out yeah um but the other thing i think that the the play is with this at least from like a business perspective is that dread is your best metroid game to date so mm -hmm. i think it's like why don't we ride the the dread wave to like so to speak and let's mm -hmm. put out a full like because Prime's like your 3D shooter type uh, Metroid rather than the side-scrolling stuff. So yeah. I was like, let's put out a 3D Metroid, see how it does. I'm sure with all the hype that Dread's already got and how good it did, um, if they put out like a fully redone, like remastered, updated version of Prime 1, or even a, even if it's just like touch, like just a like an HD port or whatever of yeah. uh, the whole trilogy. Like, I think that you ride that wave, you put those out now to get people excited, like give them a taste of what a prime game is like. Cause most people haven't even played like with Dread is your best selling Metroid game that's just sold over 
I get the last numbers they announced that I saw that was like not quite three million. They're getting there, and I hope they get to three million. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm sure that at this point is because that was I think Q1 of mm. this year. So now I don't think that it was a good enough selling game to hit the top ten or whatever. So they only release they don't release exact numbers for every game. So I'm mm. sure I'll bet it's over three million now. But to that point, I think that Prime, like if you give people a taste of Prime. Mm-hmm. They're gonna want to buy Prime Four when it comes out, if that makes sense. Because I mean, 3D yeah. games typically always are gonna sell better than your side-scrolling games, and the fact that a side-scrolling Metroid sold is like your best-selling Metroid game is pretty cool, I think. Yeah, I mean, the side-scrolling 2D stuff is, I think it's a little more niche, whereas like 3D first-person shooters are just so common, and that's what like yeah. everybody plays. So it's wild how well Dread did. I mean, I was excited when they announced it, and I was blown away when I played it. Like it was just so yeah. Cool. It was- it was so fluid yeah it was such a good like like fluid is a good is a, just like a great word to explain it like it was so awesome like the button command like the button controls were so like responsive like yeah it was such a it was like i love that was i played other metroid games this is the first one that i like it felt like i enjoyed <laughs> if that makes sense <laughs> like i've played i've played like super metroid or like metroid yeah. on the um like on the nes or whatever like and they're fun but this mm-hmm. one was like oh like i want to go play more metroid the other ones were just like okay i'm gonna beat this game because i've gotten like it was more like yeah. i have to beat this and this one was like oh this is fun like it was crazy it was how, challenging too how fun it was oh they're way hard yeah, it was, yeah. One of the hardest games i've played i felt like was dreads especially yeah, it was, it was a very tough game for me. <laughs> I think for a lot of people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we got Prime 4. We got an HD remake of Dread. Mm-hmm. Like, what, I guess, so I guess the other big question now that I'm, as I'm trying to think through what Nintendo might announce is, so Nintendo Switch Online. Mm-hmm. So there's a ton of rumors with, with Sloop that the, uh, emulator that was kind of data mined to yeah. show that they're going to have a Game Boy, Game Boy Advance um, emulators on like they're ready. They work on the switch. It's just if Nintendo's working out some more <laughs> kinks or whatever, um, yeah. or out of N64 games, they just announced Pokemon Snap a few days ago as of the time of this recording, um, which will come out this next week on Friday. Um, so that's the last 64 game that they had officially announced, but there's slots for, I think, up to 38, maybe, I can't remember the exact number now, but 30-ish games were uh, kind of in the the system, I guess, to be able to show that there's room for growth. Okay. So what do you think, is, is we're looking to see what Nintendo's done with the Switch Online, and then even kind of going back to Mario Party DLC, do you think that that gets something like that gets thrown into this uh, expansion pack bundle because we've got the Splatoon DLC added in there. We got the Mario Kart DLC added in there, and then Animal Crossing right now. Yeah. Do they add like a paper or like a Mario Party DLC in there? And then, do you think what's more likely? Do you think we get Game Boy and Game Boy Advance? Do we get more 64 games, or do we? Does Nintendo do the unthinkable? We'll actually, goes both, like more games <laughs> and and an actual new uh, system on the platform. Hopefully at some point they'll do both. But uh, I think as far as the Mario Party stuff, I, I could see them throwing it into the expansion pass to kind of like still want people to get the expansion pass and really push them to get it, If especially if they're playing Mario Party. Chances are they probably are if they have a Switch. But um, yeah. if they don't, I mean, I'm still going to buy it. But I, I would hope they do, and I hope they don't raise the price because they haven't raised the price right. yet since the initial raising of the price with the new expansion pack and stuff. And um, I think... I would like to see the GBA games added, and I think it's possible like this year. And I think they're probably just holding on to it because they're Nintendo, and we need right. to wait. And I was I was surprised that Pokemon Snap was their first, their their last officially announced game. I, I felt like like there's great games on there. I'm super like I've been delving into it. I just got the expansion pass recently. I haven't had it yet, so I've only had it for the past like three weeks. So I I really look forward to like Paper Mario and stuff like that. But um. I just feel like there's room for more, but if they want to add the GBA, that'd be really cool. Just don't make it more expensive, please. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's good. don't up don't the price. The yeah, it's like, you know that people could just emulate these games on their computers for free. So we're already giving you money. You just, <laughs> you just got to give us a little, feed us a little more. Right. Yeah, I totally agree. 
So what? Just playing on my and emulate on my computer. Like I, yeah, I just like I mean, the, the, the legit way. Yeah, and, it, and even to a point, it's more convenient to be able to play on the Switch mm -hmm. than it is to have to try to bust out the computer to emulate it. Like carrying around a laptop's not. Yeah, like, I'd rather be that. able to sign. Like it would like being able to like sit on public transport or like even just like sitting on the couch. It's so much more convenient to go and just grab your Switch and play, and then you can play whatever games they decide to drop. Um, yeah. So, so you just picked up the expanse. So, what's your favorite game so far? You mentioned Paper Mario. You're looking forward. To, is that the game you're most excited to play, or what's yeah. the, what's been your your favorite so far with with the Paper Mario expansion for sure. Pass? Because yeah. uh, as a kid, I never had an N64. Um, I had a Game Boy Color, so I was kind of a Nintendo kid. But I had a Sega and I had a PlayStation One, so I never had N64. So I'm like really hyped to get these games on the expansion pass, and I never played the OG Paper Mario on N64. Okay. My first Paper Mario was a Thousand Year Door on GameCube, and I loved that game. I still think it's like one of the best Mario games I've ever played. But um, I beat the Switch Paper Mario, the Origami King, and it was okay. good. I just didn't love the battling, so I'm really excited to go yeah. back to Roots, where it just feels more like an RPG with turn-based combat and stuff, and not the puzzles that they threw at us in a Origami King. Origami King, yeah, fair enough. A thousand Year Door is, I think. It's got to be the best Paper Mario game out there. Yeah, like I, I loved, so. I loved Paper Mario sixty four, and it definitely laid the groundwork. But Thousand Year Door was like, it was that's such a good game. Like, yeah, I would love to see that come to Switch at some point. That would be awesome. I don't, do, like, I don't know how important. Yeah, seriously, that'd be so fun. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So with, with that, oh, man, I would love to see GameCube come to the six come to online. <laughs> I don't yeah, think that real. ever happens. I think that GameCube games, they probably they probably keep them. If they do come, they come to a port. Like come as like a sixty dollar port. Yeah, yeah. But Thousand Year Door, I would, I'd love to get that on the, on Switch. <laughs> yes, I would love to. I don't know where my GameCube copy went. I don't think I sold it when I was a kid. I might have sold it back to GameStop, but I was looking on the internet for one, and it's like one hundred and twenty bucks. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, they're expensive. All right. Not right now. Maybe, GameCube maybe games today. are crazy right now. It's insane how that's the other problem I think with all that, like that I would love to see with this online expansion pack is to be able to continue to throw these retro games on there. Mm -hmm. Because if you want to play like in the legit like hack, like on the old hardware, it's getting so expensive. Like, yeah, like Mario, like Thousand Year Doors, like 120 bucks on <laughs> on eBay. Like you can't and you can't just go down to like your local store and pick it up again for 50, 60 bucks. It's like everything's second market. Yeah. And it's insane how much prices are right now for like 64. It's GameCube is especially expensive GameCube's right very now. Pricey. All the games, Mario Sunshine is a pretty pricey game from what, I, from what I've seen. Uh, Kirby Air Ride, all the Mario parties are very expensive. So, yeah. So I would love to see them add, continue to add to the expansion packs almost simply just for that reason to like, like mm -hmm. Nintendo always wants their cut of the pie. So it's like <laughs> they've got to see, they've got to see these prices and see people are paying just through the nose for this stuff. It's like, yeah, if you want to really, and people are complaining, <laughs> yeah, and people are complaining about the service anyway. So it's like, why not beef it up and give it some substance and put out these like games that people really want, that people are gonna, they'll pay the 50 bucks a month or 50 bucks a year because yeah. in the end it's infinitely cheaper than buying Mario Party on eBay or buying something yeah. else on through a, like a, a local game store or something like that that uh, if they were to add Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color games, and GameCube games to the online, I think they might beef up the price a little bit. Yeah. So I wouldn't, I, I would, I mean, as long as it wasn't anything too wild, I, I'd be okay with it. But even if they just ported somehow GameCube games or like emulated them and you could buy them digitally, I mean, I would like for like five to $20, depending on the game, I feel like that's also a reasonable thing for them to do. And they yeah. can help drive down the prices of the physical copies. Or it would drive up the prices. <laughs> I don't even know anymore. Yeah, I mean, the, it's, it's, it's we miss the virtual console, don't we? The place. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what the, sure. the market's all over the place. I wish that they would kind of bring back the virtual console in some manner. Because mm -hmm. like you could buy Paper Mario, um, and it was like five bucks or something. Like, and you just own it <laughs> digitally, which is so nice, and not having to pay the, subs the subscription every time. So, um, yeah. I guess it also depends too on like what your point if they up the price too much on the system on the on the actual bundle or the expansion pack. Mm -hmm. So like I'm seeing a lot of like would you be okay at this because this is a lot a lot of people are kind of thinking if they add GBA 
to the expansion pass um, to kind of give that the value. But then they left. I mean, I think this is a good ad or this would be great. And then they add just the regular Game Boy to the base level tier. Like, I think that one kind of just continues to add value to the expansion pack to kind of help justify paying the extra. But then it, yeah. you're still giving everybody else your twenty dollars subscription, your twenty dollars subscribers that hey, here's another system and there's a reason that you can keep subscribing for for the base level tier. I think that'd be a good idea. That'd be that'd be a good move on their end, I think, and it would make people feel a lot better. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with with this too is I think people are excited for Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. I think what will make make or break it is the games that they obviously decide to throw on there because yeah i really like if if they don't put like like a pokemon game so if they do like you gotta throw like crystal or gold or something on there and then you gotta put like ruby or sapphire and then you've gotta mm -hmm. put like Met like like super like was it metroid super metroid metroid advance or something super or metroid. Tamis returns yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you gotta put something like that on there. You gotta put like, um, like some of these other bigger IPs and not just like all this fluff. Like if you look at the SNES online, I feel like it's just, it's you've got like fluff. two or three <laughs> titles that you've heard of. And then the rest are just games. You're like, I've never even heard of this game in my life. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess maybe somebody from that time might remember, but I don't. <laughs> right. I, don't, I see Kirby, I see Zelda, I see Mario. I'm like, okay, I know these guys. And then. The rest I'm very confused about. There's Kid Icarus too. I know Kid Icarus, but yeah, a lot of random stuff, a lot of random fluff. I think if they do the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, they had to put stuff that's still relevant today, like you said, like Pokemon, do some Zelda stuff, and just keep it relevant because people, especially newer, the newer generation that gets into gaming, they want to play the older games too. Right. So if they had access to that. It would, it would just make sense. Like yeah, I think I think, I mean, with how big Pokemon is right now and getting ready for Scarlet Violet. Like they're pushing, they're pushing like Pokemon Home. Like mm -hmm. I think, I think it would be so cool to have like online connectivity with like gold, silver. And I, <laughs> I know you had like a, a, you had somewhat to the like on the 3DS with the virtual console games. Mm -hmm. Like, but be able to do that on the Switch and then be able to transfer. Like it'd be so cool to be able to take like a Pokemon from like like a Charmander rare from Pokemon Red, and then mm -hmm. take it from the Red game all the way up to now because essentially there really hasn't been any other way for you to kind of take a game from gen one all the way to the current generation without um trying to have some like either like a game boy advance link cables be able to try to figure out how to get it to like because i think mm -hmm. from game boy advance to ds you couldn't get anything linked no. um and then i'm not sure if i think you could like and then for ds games you couldn't do anything i don't think from the 3ds or something but it's like it'd be cool to be able to have that connectivity and be able to like bring pokemon from the base gen one all the way to scarlet and violet eventually when it drops yeah that'd be pretty wild they, they could do it <laughs> they have the power they have the money yeah so it's possible so that's the hope right is that they actually because yeah. like you, they have the power and money to do all of this like every one of our dreams like with nintendo it's like they could do it it's <laughs> just like it. why not <laughs> they're just like maybe tomorrow i don't know <laughs> so yeah so hope, that's like that's what i'm hoping for i guess with with online is that they mm. add the gba i think that if they do add gba it doesn't come until september because that's when they announce the yeah. system and that's when mm. most people's renewals are going to be up for mm -hmm. re-renewal Okay. And so it's like if you if you drop it if they announce it now so i think they announce it now and be like hey this is coming september whatever um, yeah and then it gets people to either the hope is that it gets them to re-renew when it when it hits um or to leave that yeah. auto renew on i guess that they that they used to throw on there regardless <laughs> of uh, what you had yeah um so then with kind of continuing with with this online switch online uh, mm. with the 64 so we've got Mario Party Superstars we've talked a little bit about do you think that for the 64 games at least do you think they put the original games on there or do you think that as part of the DLC uh, as a hopeful DLC I guess and it has nothing's been announced and I'm just I'm assuming that they put something out for this because it needs it one it needs it bad and two it's such a good game um, yeah do you think they th just throw in just more mini games and more boards from like Mario Party 2 and 3 or even from i guess from the original mario party instead of adding them onto switch online because like part of um, me thinks that they don't add it because of superstars but the other part yeah. of me thinks that they add it because they're like 
some of the most classic games that they can get without having to try to deal with like a third party licensing agreement. Yeah. And I mean, there's still the advantage to superstars where you get the combination of all the first three Mario parties for the board right. and then all the mini games from the N64 through GameCube. So I don't think it would really take away from sales of superstars, especially I, I would wonder, they'd probably add online like they did with Mario Kart. So yeah, but if they didn't, then it definitely wouldn't take away because having online Mario Party, I don't know why it took so long. <laughs> I, know. I don't know why Nintendo drags their feet with online stuff, but uh, it's really, really cool. It's really like responsive. I play online with friends all the time. So, but um, I, I think if they add boards, I hope they add stuff from the GameCube era games. I, I've heard, yeah. I had a conversation with somebody who said he thinks that they're going to have a a second Superstars game that incorporates all the GameCube games. Oh, that'd be map. sweet. It would be sweet. And if it if it'd be a bigger game, I'm okay with that. But I'm also okay with keeping everything like included into the one the one game. And I mean I just for me, I just want like five more maps. I, it might sound like a lot because they gave us five, but five more maps would be good. And just a little bit yeah. more character. Because they just gave us the basic characters, which is fine. But I want like the weird obscure characters in the first in uh, super mario party on switch i always play dry bones dry bones are shy guy and i just think it's so cool that they included them in that game but then they just went back to the basics with superstars yeah i think like yeah they i feel like superstars was i think that superstars is the best mario party game mm. um in a long time but to your point yeah. it's lacking like it's lacking characters it's lacking boards and even though they've advertised that oh we've got 100 plus mini games or 100 mini games or whatever it yeah. is it feels like once you play it for a couple hours it's like you hit the same, the same mini games, games too many times yeah. and then yeah. to your point five extra boards that's not like it sounds like a lot but it's not a ton because after you play five rounds you've already played every board like <laughs> yeah like i think that would that would be sweet i hope I honestly think that they like. I think that they could treat this kind of like the Mario Kart DLC. I don't think they will. I yeah. think that they could though, where you kind of put it out in waves and be like, "All right, wave one, here's Shy Guy, Dry Bones, and Kamek or something." And so there's your three extra characters, and then Kamek's a new playable character that you've never had before. You yeah. throw in like, okay, here's uh, Mario's Rainbow Castle from Mario Party One. Here's the, I can't remember the name of it, but like the cowboy one from Mario Party oh, 2. Yeah. And then like another one from Mario Party 3 or something. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, and then, okay. And then here's like another 10 mini games, you know? Yeah. So that they're adding, they're continuing to add content and you know that, okay, it, stuff's coming. You can kind of put it out in waves. And then in that instance too, I feel like they can add more content because if you just drop mm -hmm. a ton at once, um, they're not going to put, I guess they're not going to put a ton at once. So if you drop, if you can kind of do it in stages, I feel like you're going to get more, more potential to add more stuff, I guess, rather than just one update from Nintendo being like, okay, here you go. Here's an update. But yeah. if it's like, okay, here's the waves of a bunch of stuff. I think you're going to be able to get a beefier game at some point. No, for sure. I think doing that also will um, motivate people to get it who don't have it yet. And the more content right. they see coming out, and then it's getting advertised because they're putting content out. So people will get reminded that it exists. And if they're on the fence before, then maybe they'll buy it now. Or new Switch owners see it getting advertised because of the new content. There's just there's so many angles to hit it from. And it would make sense. And I don't know. I would hope they would do something like that. It make it's the perfect kind of game for it. Even if yeah. it was in smaller, smaller batches, like one map and like two characters at a time. Like I'm okay with anything as long as they just keep beefing it up because I, I'm a huge Mario Party person. It's what me and my yeah. friends play when we hang out. So I, I'm I'm really hoping for it. Yeah, I think I think going back to our first our first kind of question, the biggest thing I think that I would like to is is Mario Party DLC. I think I totally agree there. Yeah, I think it's such it is such a good game, and mm -hmm. I think Nintendo has it feels like Nintendo has dropped the ball almost on so many releases lately <laughs> like the games are good like the games themselves are awesome and the, like, yeah. they look good they play good but mm -hmm. then they don't give us content at launch like mario yeah. party superstars had five boards what is it eight characters nine ten characters something like that and then 10, 100 yeah. mini games and then you've got like more recently is like mario mario strikers a uh, battle league i love the mm -hmm. game like i'm a huge soccer fan i've yeah. loved mario strikers since the og gamecube one like this one it's super fun the cups were super fun but mm -hmm. after you beat the cups it's like 
you get the galactic cups. It's like, you don't unlock anything. You just get more coins. And then uh, all you can do is play online. So it's like, at what point, it's just, at what point this just turns into FIFA. It's just, okay, <laughs> it's just, I, I love FIFA and don't like that. Like, I'll continue to play this game. Like I played it last night, like it's still fun, but yeah. it feels like there's, it just feels empty. And I think that's like the, a lot of Nintendo games, like especially with Mario stuff right now, it feels like that mm -hmm. they're just not giving us a complete experience it's like here's a cool yeah. game here's a fun idea here's it looks good it plays nice but at some point you're gonna get bored with it because there's just not enough content so yeah. i really hope that if they continue to like and i get that they want to leave room for dlc and to add on extra bonus sales which to some extent i'm fine with mm -hmm. but it's like at some point just give us a full game and then give us dlc <laughs> that like blows our mind instead of like yeah. oh now the game's done exactly exactly and that's i I always say I miss the old games where you just turn them on and play them and that's yeah. it. Glitches and all, like I didn't care, but also it's like a the this age of online where we can get DLC to our games is like a blessing with a curse because it's yeah. really awesome that we can add on to our games. Like the Breath of the Wild expansion is really cool and so many games have expansions that are awesome, but um, also then they hold out on us at release typically. So it just, it feels, it's like a weird balance yeah for sure so i guess we'll have to wait and see what nintendo does um <laughs> i think we are running out of time for today so i just wanted yeah. to to thank jeremy one more time for hopping on it's been a pleasure discussing with yeah. you thanks um, for having me i really appreciate it really hope that we get some of these things from nintendo hopefully they don't uh drop the ball too much on we do see and we end up seeing like dlc for superstars hopefully we see metroid prime uh, four stuff um yeah hopefully something from zelda i don't think we see breath of the wild too but hopefully we nah. do see that we hope to see one of those uh one of those remakes so uh just want to i'll throw it back to you one more time uh just remind our, our listeners where uh, they can find you and uh yeah and a little yeah. bit more about your content yeah uh you can find me on youtube uh, instagram and twitter all the handles are the same it's let's play gray uh gray's with an e and um i do a lot of gaming content I do a lot of Let's Plays. I'm starting to do live streaming and I'm talking about video game news as well. That's also something I'm dabbling with. So expect to see more of that and always continuing with the Let's Plays as my name implies. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, thanks again for hopping on. Uh, appreciate you guys for watching as well. Hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the Lost Boys Gaming Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Trent Anderson from Lost Boys Gaming. Uh, Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and like this video if you're watching it on YouTube. And if you are listening to this through other means, you can always check us out on YouTube at Lost Boys Gaming. Uh, appreciate you for again hopping on, Jeremy. Uh, nice hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And until next time, catch you later.